to everyone. I think we are going to be ready to start. Um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself, and then we'll go uh, and do into a quick introduction for Matthew, and then after that, I'll go over uh, the information for the uh, DEI High Impact Grant information session with all of you, and then we'll do a a uh, Q and A and answer any uh, questions that you may have about the new grant uh, that is open to uh, nonprofit organizations. So my name is Nestor Velos Pasalacua and I am the DEI manager for the city of San Luis Obispo. And then go ahead, Matthew. I'm Matthew Melendrez and I am the DEI management fellow for the city of San Luis Obispo. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you so very much for being here today. Uh, now, if you just could please bear with me as I am going to be sharing my screen. And I hope you can all see that. If you can please just let me know. Yep, excellent. So again, thank you so very much for being here with us today. Um, the Office of DEI uh, has been established for about a year and five months. Uh, and it's a, a new uh, office in the city of San Luis Obispo. And uh, we are in charge of moving forward all the different initiatives and strategies and objectives uh, by the city council and as well uh, from the community to ensure that we continue to build a very inclusive and welcoming uh, San Luis Obispo for everyone. One of the key tasks and projects that we have is continue to support and have funding available to organizations that continue to further those initiatives, the same kind of uh, um, concepts and applications and projects and plans that uh, further uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So this will be an information session that will give you an idea of what is it now that we're looking forward when it comes to the application process and what kind of uh, uh, thoughts or concepts you might want to apply when it comes to the development of your proposals. Okay, so as a background, uh, Council, uh, City Council approved the first round of grants um, back in uh, November 17th, 2020. And in that process, it uh, allocated uh, $109,000 to eight different nonprofit organizations uh, in the city of San Luis Obispo. Um, every two years, uh, the city engages in a process for a new financial plan. So in fiscal year 2021-23, the city approved a new financial plan that allocated $150,000 uh, per fiscal year in 21-22 and in 22-23 for a grand total of uh, $300,000 uh, for that uh, fiscal plan for those two years. Uh, in fiscal year 22-23, uh, a total amount of $300,000 was allocated to 21 nonprofit organizations in the city of San Luis Obispo. Now, as you might have guessed it, uh, DEI is a major city goal uh, for the city, and uh, it is part of the 23-25 financial plan as well, and that continues to provide sustainable funding uh, for a grand total of $300,000. Uh, for those two fiscal years, but every fiscal year, so currently 23, 24, it will be $150,000. So that's what we have right now uh, available for the current fiscal year uh, for the applications that are currently open, um, a total of $150,000. Uh, the project plan, what is DEI high impact grants? So the purpose of the grant is to enhance a sense of belonging for all peoples in the community, uh, uplift and support local projects, programs, and initiatives that contribute to creating a San Luis Obispo that is more welcoming, inclusive, equitable, and safe. Uh, something that is uh, very important to note about this particular uh, grant is that the scope uh, of inclusion and equity uh, is actually quite broad and complex in itself. And the reason that it was intended to be um, uh, in such a uh, manner was because we wanted to give a lot of uh, opportunity for different uh, organizations to think broadly 
to think create, uh, creatively and to think about innovative uh, projects or ideas that could potentially be implemented and have a larger impact in the community. We didn't really want to um, narrow down the capacity of each one of the different agencies and, uh, and we wanted to contribute to a larger definition that can help explore those new initiatives and create, uh, creating uh, new applications. Uh, the grant is intended to support organizations and projects that show an understanding of the root causes of the systemic issues that we have uh, inherently uh, observed for so many years and historically, and how each one of us and each one of these organizations that apply for the funding can have a strong impact in the community. Um, and then lastly, projects must indicate and show success and contribute ultimately to a systemic change. We understand very well that one project or 20 projects in the next couple of years may not necessarily have a, the most impact, but it will have a long-term um, effect um, that we are trying to build a foundation that will continue to increase the way in, the way in which we define and we see inclusion. Uh, diversity and equity in the city. And we want to be able to support those projects and plans that are building those foundations that in the, in the future will be, uh, again, sustainable on its own, but also have a greater impact. Funding areas. So again, like I mentioned before, we really um, I wanted to uh, understand what are those impacts uh, to historically disproportioned uh, communities. And as you all know, there are underserved and underrepresented communities in the city of San Luis Obispo. So uh, these gap, or excuse me, these the funding areas that we are, I'm about to go over with you basically represent some of those key examples, but they are not just the ones that you need to focus on. These are just certain ideas to get um, to get you uh, thinking about what are some of the key um, areas that you have identified that become a gap in the way that you either provide services or the way that you have already identified uh, in um, how communities uh, need support and access. Um, one of those areas is physical and mental health services. How can we ensure that those areas in which community members that are underserved or underrepresented continue to receive those services or even access and navigating those services itself? Another funding area could be, for example, education and housing. As you all know, for example, housing and homelessness is also a major city goal for the city of San Luis Obispo. And there is an equity component within that piece that we believe could be a, a specific funding area that seeks partnership between different organizations and to put forward a solution or a way to mitigate those um, um, the housing um, issues that we encounter in the city. Another larger spectrum of that is, for example, criminalization. As you all know, as you all know, for example, a lot of individuals for uh, people of color, but Black, Indigenous, and people of color are affected by criminalization. What is it that we can do in a system-wide approach? to change that narrative, to continue to enhance uh, the type of uh, collaborative work that can um, impact the community and allow those individuals to actually seek some kind of justice, right? Other pieces that are critical, for example, under a funding area is food security and community representation. As you all know, um, we need to make sure to pay attention to those areas of uh, access to food and care and making sure that, for example, individuals that have not been represented in government as well have a say and a seat at the table and being able to be part of the decision-making process. So as I mentioned, uh, these are some of the gaps. Uh, they are not limited to the ones that I just mentioned to you, but hopefully these are giving you some ideas of how the services that you provide or uh, the, um, uh, the concepts and applications that you have within your organization can ultimately enhance diversity, equity, and inclusion by emphasizing and looking at the funding areas that may potentially also be linked uh, to the application of those um, uh, new strategies that you're putting forward with your proposal. Now, that's the funding area. The next slide is going to be about the funding criteria. Um, to be able to apply for the grant, there are a couple of items that you have to make sure that you need. Uh, uh, and one of those, for example, is the development uh, of a one-page DEI statement. 
And by one page, we don't mean that you have to have a complete page, but your DI statement should be long enough to be able to reflect the following three areas. One is the understanding and application of DEI, what that looks like for your organization. Uh, secondly, it should have affirming language that furthers and creates access and a sense of belonging in the community. And finally, it should, in a way, advance DEI in the city as well. So again, it is a one-page DI statement. It could be two or three paragraphs, depending on how we said that you're framing it. But we're seeking basically an understanding of how your community, or how your community organization will have an impact by seeing themselves defining those key elements, right? What does DEI look within the organization? And we wanna be able to understand that better. Another component that you will have to submit is a one-page detailed budget for the proposed project or program or concept or application that you're moving forward. We want to uh, truly understand what the impact, how the dollars are going to be used. So that way, <clears throat> the Human Relations Commission, the advisory body here at the city that will provide the recommendations for the funding, uh, will have a better understanding of uh, how the funding will be used by the proposed project. Another item that you'll need to provide as part of the funding criteria is the organizational chart. We want to understand who are the members of the organization. We want a better understanding of the impact and how uh, the members can actually have a further application of the project, how they support the project. And we want to know, you know, basically the organization a little bit more because they are our partners and we want to continue to work with them. Uh, and finally, the other component that you'll have to submit as well is a document certifying your federal tax exempt status uh, as a nonprofit organization as well. These are some of the, uh, uh, well, these are the, the funding criteria pieces. There's a little bit more to give you uh, uh, detailed information as well. And uh, as I mentioned uh, before, so you all know, if we are requiring a document that shows your um, nonprofit status, uh, we want to make sure that you all know as well that the applicants for the DEI high impact grants should be a, a registered 501c3 uh, nonprofit organizations. It could be a governmental organization as well, an education entity, or a faith based organization as well. Uh, Something else to be uh, aware of is the activities, the funding activities or the concepts of the application and the proposal that you're aiming to complete uh, should focus primarily in the city of SLO. So we wanna make sure that the impact that um, um, happens uh, critically here in the city. Um, and as well, the funding activities as, uh, should uh, serve the city uh, residents, the city of San Luis Obispo residents. Uh, funding requests must show a measurable impact and success. We're trying to understand and compare apples to apples so we have a better understanding of how certain organizations are doing. And that way we can tell a better story of how the funding that is being provided by the city is truly doing um, a, a creating change within the community. Uh, something that I mentioned before and I will reinforce again is that something that uh, would be potentially critical in the review process for the um, HRC, for the Human Relations uh, Commission when they review all the applications, is to determine um, new and creative ways or approaches in which uh, we can have a higher impact in the community or a deeper impact in the community. We really, They will really want to know specifically how um, you can create some type of system change or new thoughts or new narrative and ideas within the city through the services and activities and programs that are being moved forward with that proposal. Uh, and something that's new this year for um, everyone is the partnership and collaboration between one or two uh, organizations is welcome and really encouraged. And I'll give a little bit more of details in regards to how that would impact on the available funding for those organizations that want to apply uh, jointly. But I do wanna say that once an organization, two organizations are more planned to act jointly, 
uh, in an application, the lead organization must be a nonprofit organization, uh, must be a governmental organization, an education entity, or a faith-based organization as well. Okay, so now what we wanna do is give you a little bit of examples. What does that look like? So we cover the funding areas, we cover the funding criteria, we give you a little bit of background on how City Council approved the funding and where is it that we're trying to move next with this available funding um, that we have for uh, fiscal year 23-24. As I mentioned before, uh, all the proposals uh, must uh, basically focus on a specific uh, they can focus, excuse me, on uh, underserved and underrepresented communities. But all of your applications, all of the services, all of the concepts um, that you, your proposal um, aims to achieve during the uh, grant project timeline uh, should provide access to the entire community at large. And the idea is that while you can center your efforts on those community members that are highly underrepresented or underserved, you know that that will have an impact in the entire community by welcoming or creating spaces for different communities to come together. So yes, you can center your efforts in one community or different communities, but at the same time, some of those um, concepts and services that you are applying should as, as well be um, completely accessible to the community at large. Now, what are some of those examples that can help you kind of see where we are trying to, uh, you know, what, what the city would like to see uh, implemented in the future. So for example, some of them include social justice or um, uh, um, anti-racism activities and training programs that can help uh, individuals and the community as a whole uh, to gain larger knowledge and skills about how they can engage in activities that promote uh, social justice, right? Another aspect could be, for example, an ally in advocacy training in programs that create spaces for learning and building community. A lot of different organizations have been doing similar work already, but imagine creating an element in which you continue to build not only momentum, but sustainability in the process. So you create community leaders that are part of the engagement process and help in the decision process, decision-making process within different organizations or even uh, at a larger setting in the community as a whole, right? Another request, uh, a request example, for example, will be creating leadership programs or mentorship programs uh, and creating that uh, communication between businesses and, uh, and nonprofit organizations, right? So seeking different ways in which um, organizations have the capacity to communicate to one another and creating those leadership and mentorship activities that can help. Uh, it can be targeted to all individuals, but you can, again, focus on those particular groups that are underserved or underrepresented. Um, and then, for example, uh, looking at community art and historical projects that highlight the history and the contributions of a specific um, populations, right? Imagine creating a um, bike tour or creating a walking tour within the city that highlights specific areas and tells the history and the story of different populations. And that can, for example, be a partnership program, a program or project between different organizations that talk about the history, one talks um, about the contribution, and then it's led by another organization that is available as a, um, tour uh, that is offered to different school settings or even to different community members, right? Um, so these are some of those examples. Obviously, um, we wanna make sure to get um, some of these out to you so you can understand like where we are aiming. But at the same time, the, we are going to be offering uh, technical assistance in the development uh, of the implementation of this grant. And as well as, uh, as you're actually working on developing the proposal. And we want to be able to talk to you and talk about uh, and offer you that assistance that you need as you're actually thinking and in the development of these uh, of these projects. Um, next is the funding information and restrictions. So um, as I mentioned earlier, there is a little bit of a difference now. So single applicants, uh, there is a minimum of $5,000 requests. 
and the max dollar amount that they can request uh, for their proposal will be up to $20,000. Now, for partnership applications, uh, it could be one or two more applicants. Uh, but again, that, that the little caveat on that is that the lead applicant must be a nonprofit organization. Uh, there is no minimum dollar amount that they can request. Uh, but the total higher uh, max amount that they can request is up to forty thousand dollars. Now, uh, as well, a maximum of one grant award per organization or uh, per partnership or partner application, um, as well. Uh, if you end up having, for example, a uh, a fiscal agent. Uh, that will be basically assisting on the finance piece of the project, uh, keeping track of those uh, expenses. That's that would, that would not necessarily count. That will be actually uh, separate because one organization themselves, the nonprofit, is the one who is leading the project implementation and the application. Um, uh, and whether they have a fiscal agent, it is that particular agency who is applying for the grant. The fiscal agent, more than anything, is what administratively is helping them achieve and keeping track of the expenses and the use of the funding for the application of the project. I do want to just mention that. So if you were to have a question about that, we can uh, uh, get into a little bit more of the details. Um, another, as, uh, another key information of this is that if there's a way for you to leverage funding, uh, if you have received other funding from other uh, organizations, uh, how can you leverage some of that to continue to have that larger impact in the community? And that's something that we want to see encouraged, right? So if you're able to identify other funding sources that will continue to have a, and provide longevity to the project, great. Uh, but we also understand there are other constraints as well that may not necessarily be uh, uh, available. But uh, I, I think it's important just to mention that, you know, thinking about the sustainability and longevity of the project, that's something important. Um, the programs and the projects are intending to start January 1st, uh, 2024, and they will end in uh, December 31st, 2024 as well. So it's an entire calendar year. Uh, they will be reporting pieces, reporting elements that you'll have to provide as well to the city. One will be a mid-year report, which will most likely be around early August. And then the a year end report will be provided then in January of 2025, giving you at least two more weeks to be able to work and compile all of your data and provide the final report to the city. And then to be able to make this all of all of this happen, you have to execute a contract with the city. So once you uh, complete your application, it gets uh, sent to the HRC for review. Once they do the final recommendation, that's presented to city council. And then after that's presented, then we can we will con uh, we will continue with the execution of a contract. And once the contract is fully executed, we can then uh, you can then begin the pro uh, the implementation of the project. Now, what are some of the key uh, of the restrictions? Um, the grant will not be able to fund and will not fund uh, anything that is advancing any political causes. I will not be funding any religious activities and will um, and uh, will not be able to be given for uh, for profit or personal gain. So I just wanted to uh, be completely clear that those are the three restrictions uh, as part of the, of the grant. So as you're building that, just make sure that it, um, as you're building the, the, uh, your grant and uh, the proposal, just make sure that it doesn't fall within any of those uh, categories. Otherwise, it will not be uh, uh, reviewed by the Human Relations Commission. Then uh, funding decisions, how does that happen? As I mentioned before throughout the, the, this presentation, uh, the Human Relations Commission, it is an advisory body here at the city and they will form a subcommittee, a review subcommittee, uh, uh, who will meet three times to determine uh, the funding. Uh, one time they meet independently, each one of them, and review the entirety of the applications received for the grant. And then they meet twice uh, as a group to be able to, uh, they convene and then they discuss their uh, process of uh, um, and, uh, reviewing all of the applications 
as a group and then selecting uh, if for a final recommendation. Now, those final funding recommendations uh, are also presented to the entire HRC, to the entire body, the advisory body, and then they make that, uh, then they provide those final recommendations over to city council for approval. Now, uh, all of the proposals will be evaluated uh, uh, um, against basically meeting the, fun, uh, the funding areas, the funding criteria, as well as the potential success, the application, the implementation of the project, and how it will impact um, the community and any system change that, they, uh, that the Human Relations Commission uh, sees that, right? Uh, so it is a lengthy process of actually for them to kind of determine to make sure that it is um, as uh, impactful as it can be for the community. And then uh, as any advisory body, they will have you know, their discretion to be able to see to determine which are those organizations that truly will have, uh, be able to use the, uh, you know, the dollars and use them the most efficiently and effectively to impact the community. Um, and uh, when the uh, subcommittee reviews uh, and provides their recommendation to the entire advisory body, the Human Relations Commission. Uh, uh, we will also host a uh, hearing, a public hearing. And during that time, all of the applicants that have applied for the grant will have the opportunity to be present and the HRC, the Human Relations Commission, will at that point address any questions or hear public comments in regards to um, the application of uh, the, the application of uh, uh, the proposals, basically, right? Um, so this is how the funding decisions are being made. Ultimately, uh, once the recommendations are made, these ones are presented again to City Council, and then City Council approves the final recommendation, and then the Office of DEI engages in the contract development with, with each one of the organizations that have been approved for funding. Now, the timeline. So the application has been open for a week already, uh, July 31st, that's when it opened. Um, August 7th, which is today, we're having our information session. And uh, next week, our, uh, August 14th, we're gonna have our office hours for technical assistance to be able to offer you technical assistance and any questions you may have as you continue to write the grant. Uh, if you uh, face or in, uh, find any challenges or barriers, that's where we can actually come in and offer you thoughts and ideas and potential solutions in the writing of the grant. Um, if you are interested in uh, receiving technical assistance, which it is a, a half an hour, a 30 minute meeting with me and with Matthew, uh, do please email us so we are able to um, set up a time. Uh, currently, we have five available times. One of them has already been uh, reserved. Uh, so I just want to let you know uh, that that's available to you. Uh, if we need to uh, open up more uh, available slots in the future, we will make that happen for as, many, uh, for as much time that is needed to be able to provide support to the applicants as well. Uh, September 1st is when the application will close. Uh, that will close right at 5 in the afternoon. Uh, October uh, 4th, that's again when I mentioned to you that we'll have a public hearing and the HRC decision on the funding recommendations. Uh, November 2023, this November, we're going to go ahead and pro uh, present to City uh, Council the final funding uh, decisions or recommendations. Uh, by December, we're going to start working on getting those contracts routed to all of the approved uh, agencies um, that receive funding. And then uh, funds are going to be dispersed in 2020, in January 2024. Um, and then we get our first mid-year report in June and the last report in January 2025 for this current grant timeline. Now, we are at a point to be able to answer any of your questions. Um, if I just want to make another quick comment, this uh, presentation that is being recorded will be available uh, on the DI website. So if you go to slowcity.org forward slash diversity um, and click on the option for grants, you will be able to access um, uh, the two available grants that we have 
uh, right now. And one of them, obviously, is a DEI high impact grants. Once you go there, you'll be able to see all of the information about the application, as well as any supporting documents and videos that we are adding in there. So this video will be posted there as well. Um, if you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, we're ready to answer them. Yes, Chelsea. Hi. Um, so I am curious if you have any guidance on admin. Um, we're, we have a fiscal sponsor and can't accept any grants without including admin because, um, you know, they provide all of our financial oversight and, and all of that. And so I wanted to know if there was any, um, like percentage that we should stay within or if you'd prefer it all be rolled into the program costs or if you had any um thoughts about that that would help mm -hmm. us package our application best right and, and i can i can and um on this regard i can tell you that probably it'll be a one-on-one -on -one conversation depending on what the specifics of the project look like as well as how um that fiscal agent serves that purpose in which uh, we might need to find that good balance in between how funding is being used to one, cover some of those expenses, but at the same time, making sure the application uh, of the project in itself, it is as impactful and successful as it can be. So if that's the case, I, it, 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 I can tell you right now, it's, it's, there is no uh, specific answer. It just depends on the scenario. Uh, and the application it means definitely something that can be worked on as part of the proposal. Okay, thank you. Yes, Donna. Hi everyone. Thank you for doing this, Nest Nestor and Matthew. Um, I'm a, I'm still a wee bit um, confused about the two applicant um, or you know two organization application process, and um, for example, one could be a 501c3 and another could be an ad hoc group. Is that what we're thinking, or should they be two established nonprofits? That's a great question. I would say that they will have to be established nonprofits. It could even be, uh, potentially, be, um, if you're working with a, a school district, right? In the other, uh, which is not necessarily a nonprofit, but uh, it could be uh, if the other partner, for example, were to be, uh, could be a business entity that you're working with that has been also doing a lot of work under DEI and you're trying to, uh, use and leverage resources and capacity that is already in place, then the lead entity would have to be a nonprofit. Uh, and then the partnering entity could be, again, a business, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and then to follow up on that, um, because I attended this same workshop last year for another um, project that I didn't follow up with, but um, it was that they should be known or local organizations. So if our lead was a known and local nonprofit and the other was a statewide agency, um, you know, with a background in community organizing, that would, they're both nonprofits. Would that be a nice mix? It could be. Yeah, definitely. Right. Because I think the HRC, the Human Relations Commission, would look into, for example, what the partnership looks like and then understanding what the benefits and uh, would be of having a, a, one of those partners being, for example, a state uh, organi uh, community organization. Uh, if they see that having that presence and that support from that would be essential to the development and the application of the proposal, great. Ultimately, the HRC is the group that will be basically enforcing some of that discretion in their decision-making process for the funding. Um, it doesn't hurt to be basic, to basically use them as a partner. And in, in fact, and if that's the case, I think something that could potentially be said in the application is um, the success of partnering up with an organization like that will definitely lead into a greater impact. And I think it's part of the narrative of the application to tell uh, that story so you could explain further why um, why the partnership exists and how HRC can see that being a benefit. Perfect, thank you. And then one more question, I'm so sorry, but um, you talked about sustainability. 
So obviously the intention is not every year for the same organizations to keep coming back and, you know, accessing these funds. Um, do you kind of help organizations make connections to other grant funders, such as the community foundation or other entities so that the program is sustainable? Or if it's a notable service that um, is also the intention that it would, might possibly be rolled into uh, a budget item for the Slow City Council? Well, if it is that our office is in contact and we have information about other uh, potential grants that are becoming available, we'll make sure to share that with our uh, nonprofit organizations that are already receiving service uh, funding from the city. Uh, we want to make sure that this becomes a, um, a not only sustainable component when it comes to sharing resources between different organizations, but ultimately it also looks into how the city council had already, for example, made sustainable funding with the DI high impact grants every year. And then our goal when it comes when it comes to uh, sustainability is to think about how we can sustainability doesn't necessarily have to be about the use of funding, but about the impact in the programs, the impact in the community. Because once that's created, certain concepts, centered applica certain applications can actually be sustained on their own because we already built the foundation. So we can think of sustainability in those two areas, right? How we can continue to use funding every year to make the same program or project um, in, uh, uh, happened, or we can think about building that foundation in which helps in creating new programming or just thinking differently in the system to continue to have an impact in the community. And those are elements that we can continue to offer technical assistance in. It's not necessarily something that happens often when we think of sustainability, but uh, we're looking at the ways in which we can continue to, to lever leverage certain resources to get to those points in which more organizations, more entities can continue to uh, provide uh, support in their um, in the way of implementing new practices and that becomes more of a sustainable approach as well. I'll expand on that too, Nestor, just so like a very, like I think a very tangible way of seeing this is let's say you're starting a brand new project and there is like the grant is like, hey, this is the seed money to get this project going. It's a need, there's an equity gap. And within that application, it's more, it's, uh, I mean, you could, you know, theoretically apply for the same program next year, just whether or not the HRC and council will approve it, it's up to them. But it's it's maybe it's like, oh, you're going to apply for X project. And in that application, you know, or you can mention also we're going to have two fundraising dinners this year, and that's going to be something that we're raising for so that the next year it's, it, it continues. And so that's another way of sustainability is like, because sometimes people can have a great project and a lot of times what ends up happening is it's a one-time thing and then it leaves a gap for those who are receiving the services. Um, and that's actually kind of a tension that we live in in our county. A lot of nonprofits doing a lot of great work, but sometimes it's not sustainable. So it ultimately impacts the person um, who is needing those services. And so um, if you are like, hey, this needs, this is a need though. And we're going to also fundraise uh, December and, and, and March so that this can continue. Um, that's another way that you can show sustainability on the application. Are there any other questions? I just want to say thank, I appreciate you guys for that um, information that was really helpful about sustainability. Thank you so much. Well, so like I mentioned earlier, this information will be on the website. I will make sure, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing. Um, I'll make sure to add, add um, let's see, Matthew, if you have access to the chat, do you mind adding the, uh, website, uh, for DEI so they know, uh, the application is open and available right now. Uh, if you haven't gone in there, please go ahead and take a look at all of that that we, we have added in there for you. Um, yeah, for the reason the chat's not working, um, okay. apologies for that. So yeah, but you can go to our website, it's it's there. However you found the Zoom link, I'm sure you'll be able to find everything there too. Yes. 
um, yeah, and this information will be posted as well. Um, so please feel free to reach um, to reach out to us or um, access this video at any time. And we're here to help you. Um, and all. And again, if you need assistance in the development as part of the project, uh, we are offering technical assistance next Monday. So please feel free to email Matthew and I, and we will coordinate a time to make that happen.